always goes in one direction. And one second on the Earth is one second on Mars is one second on Jupiter. That's Jupiter is undoubtedly the biggest child on the block in our solar system, bearing the name of the god who ruled the gods in Roman mythology. Jupiter, the fifth planet from the Sun, is around 461.7 million miles away. That is so far away that it would take light traveling from the Sun 43 minutes to reach it. It is a fascinating planet that has, for centuries, captivated the interest of many astronomers. One of the brightest and easiest on the eye planets in our solar system is without a doubt Jupiter, our great guardian. Up until recently, our understanding of Jupiter had just begun to scratch the surface. However, recent trips to the planet have revealed a great deal more of its mysteries. According to Michio Kaku, years of observation of the solar system's largest planet have shown us something we never expected. Is there something we don't know about Jupiter? Let's find out. Jupiter, Earth's larger brother, is an incredibly fascinating planet. From our vantage point, Jupiter is undoubtedly a wonder to behold. With its furious ammonia storms floating on a bed of hydrogen and helium, its abundance of naturally occurring moons, and its bright hues, Jupiter is thought to be around the same age as the formation of our solar system, as are all of the other planets. Its age would be approximately 4.5 billion years, give or take. Gravity forced whirling gas and dust into a single enormous body to create Jupiter. In fact, Jupiter has a mass that is more than twice that of all the other planets put together. This material originated from the materials that were left over after the Sun was created. Is Jupiter hot or cold? Actually, the solution to this question is not straightforward. Scientists have some difficulty being completely certain about any temperature measurements taken from space or via sacrificial probes because of the intense pressure of the planet's atmosphere. Scientists have, however, been able to measure the temperatures at the gas giant's upper edge, which gives us a measurement of about minus 229 degrees Fahrenheit. Because of how cold it is, one of the main components of the atmosphere is crystalline ammonia. The view changes significantly when you approach the planet's center, though, the pressure rises as one descends lower in the atmosphere, causing the temperature to climb to a more comfortable 69.8 degrees Fahrenheit. When temperatures reach roughly 17,492 degrees Fahrenheit, hydrogen begins to liquefy as you go deeper, if a temperature probe could ever survive the journey. The planet's core, which is thought to be primarily made of rock and even metallic hydrogen, may have a temperature of up to 67,532 degrees Fahrenheit, if you could ever get there. That is actually hotter than the sun's surface, which may surprise you. Sure, it's curious, but as we'll see later, there might be a good explanation for that. Can you move around on Jupiter? In a nutshell, no. Of course, the longer response is far more complicated than that. You can't walk on Jupiter for a variety of reasons, including the planet's mostly gaseous composition, the presence of corrosive gases, extremely high temperatures, strong winds, and intense radiation. But the fundamental cause is essentially the absence of any kind of firm ground to stand on in the first place. Although the pressures and temperatures are so great, it is unlikely that you will ever reach the core, which is thought to be rather solid. However, if you were to accidentally step into Jupiter's atmosphere, its powerful gravity would swiftly draw you into its sweltering, windswept interior. These winds are extremely severe and are anticipated to reach speeds of about 400 miles per hour in some places. Would you be able to walk there if you were to somehow manage to enter the furthest layers of the gaseous atmosphere? If so, you would ultimately come across a layer of liquid hydrogen that has converted from a gaseous form due to the intense pressure. However, because it is liquid, it cannot hold your weight, which is 2.5 times greater than on Earth. Through this, you'd still be brought to your knees. However, you wouldn't likely survive for very long, even if you were able to create a buoyancy assist that would allow you to walk on some of the layers of Jupiter's atmosphere. The excessive levels of ammonia on Jupiter can cause illness and quickly destroy whatever equipment you wear. In essence, the response is a resounding no. Jupiter has some characteristics that are absolutely extraordinary. Like a big brother, Jupiter's immense size aids in protecting Earth and the other inner planets from potential dangers. It is so powerful that it is frequently considered to be the guardian of Earth. 
Some scientists assume that some comets and asteroids rush from the outer solar system to its inner region due to the strong gravity of the massive gas, which is about 2.4 times as strong as Earth's. Jupiter is frequently referred to as the shield of the Earth. This pull could shield Earth from long-period comets that approach the solar system from its furthest regions and have unimaginable repercussions on people and other living things. One such comet is supposed to have been responsible for the extinction of the dinosaurs. Long-period comets would strike our planet far more regularly if Jupiter weren't so close by. Jupiter's strong gravity, however, has also contributed to the formation of the asteroid belt by preventing space junk from condensing into a planet and pushing some of these asteroids toward the Sun and closer to Earth. A storm on Jupiter has been raging for hundreds of years. This is probably the Jupiter information that surprises you the most. The so-called Great Red Spot that was first spotted on Jupiter's surface more than 200 years ago is actually a massive whirling storm in Jupiter's atmosphere, according to researchers at NASA. Nobody can definitively say when the Great Red Spot on Jupiter originally appeared, but it is obvious that this storm is quite old. With the exception of how much larger it is, it resembles hurricanes on Earth in many ways. In fact, it is so big that two Earths could fit inside of it. Within this storm, winds can gust as high as 400 miles per hour and 270 miles per hour in certain locations close to the poles. Despite Jupiter's size, it is shrinking. Jupiter is the largest planet in the solar system, as you may have read in books or studied in school. This is undoubtedly the case, but do you realize how significant it is? In the solar system, Jupiter is nearly 2.5 times bigger than all the other planets combined. The mass of Jupiter is 318 times that of the Earth by itself. Jupiter's size is really shrinking, despite the fact that it is gaining material through impacts or accretion up to 8,000 times faster than Earth. But wait, just how? The planet has an internal heat source that is driven by the gravitational collapse that has been occurring gradually since the planet's formation. As a result, the planet produces more radiation than it absorbs from the Sun. This causes the planet to cool over time, which leads it to contract. According to astronomers, Jupiter is currently contracting by roughly 2 centimeters annually. Not that a human lifetime would make a difference. Jupiter may be a star that has failed. It's time to set your mind at ease since we earlier teased you with a tantalizing bit of information. The interior of Jupiter shares many characteristics with the Sun, which explains why. In fact, it is so popular that it has given rise to the theory that it was a failed star. It has a hydrogen and helium-rich atmosphere that is strikingly comparable to that of stars. Jupiter, however, lacks the mass necessary to start a fusion reaction at its core. When exposed to intense heat and pressure, hydrogen atoms fuse to form helium, which emits heat and light, and this process is how stars produce energy. A star's massive gravity and mass make fusion reactions possible. Jupiter needs to be more than 70 times denser than Earth in order to start the nuclear fusion process needed to turn Earth into a star. It is well known that gas giants in the vicinity of other stars are frequently found close to our Sun. The generally accepted idea states that these gas planets were created far from their star and then moved to a closer orbit. Using sophisticated computer models, scientists from Lund University and other institutions have been able to understand more about Jupiter's passage through our solar system some 4.5 billion years ago. Like the other planets in the solar system at the time, Jupiter had only just formed. Cosmic dust, which ringed our young sun in a disk of gas and particles, gradually built up the planets. Jupiter was the same size as Earth, According to the findings, Jupiter developed four times farther from the Sun than its present location would suggest. The Trojan asteroids that orbit close to Jupiter provided evidence of the migration, according to Simona Pirani, a doctoral student in astronomy at Lund University and the study's lead author. This is the first time we have proof that Jupiter was formed a long way from the Sun and then migrated to its current orbit, she says. These Trojan asteroids are divided into two groups of thousands of asteroids each, which are orbiting Jupiter in front of and behind it, respectively, at the same distance from the Sun as Jupiter. In front of Jupiter, there are around 50% more Trojans than behind it. This asymmetry turned out to be crucial to the researchers' comprehension of Jupiter's motion. According to Anders Johansson, an astronomy professor at Lund University, the asymmetry has always been a mystery in the solar system. 
In fact, the reason why the two asteroid groups do not have the same amount of asteroids has eluded scientists for a long time. However, by reenacting the events of Jupiter's formation and how the planet eventually dragged in its Trojan asteroids, Simona Pirani and Anders Johansson, together with other scientists, have now determined the cause. The researchers determined that the current asymmetry could only have happened if Jupiter was born four times farther out in the solar system and then migrated to its present location. This conclusion was reached through intensive computer simulations. Then, as Jupiter moved nearer the Sun, its own gravitational pull attracted more Trojans in front of it than behind it. The estimates show that Jupiter's migration took place between two, three million years after it first formed as an icy asteroid far from the Sun, or for about 700,000 years. The solar system's voyage inward on a spiraling path, during which Jupiter continued to circle the Sun, albeit in a more condensed path. The real migration is caused by gravitational forces from the solar system's surrounding gases. Since Jupiter was a young planet without a gas atmosphere when the Trojan asteroids were dragged in, it follows that these asteroids most likely contain the same building pieces that made up Jupiter's core. Similar migration patterns may have occurred for the ice giants Uranus and Neptune, as well as the gas giant Saturn. Another oddity about Jupiter is that, despite its size and mass, it spins the solar system's fastest. The planet rotates on its axis in just under 10 hours, a Jovian day, with a rotational velocity of 28,185 miles per hour. From Earth's perspective, that seems astonishingly quick, but a Jovian year, one orbit of the Sun, takes roughly 12 Earth years to complete. Jupiter has flattened out at the poles and bulged near the equator as a result of its rapid spin. The jiggling of molecules in the planet's atmosphere at this extreme velocity also produces significant quantities of radiation. Aside from its size, another interesting fact about Jupiter is that it boasts the solar system's greatest magnetic field. NASA researchers believe that the powerful magnetic field is caused by eddy currents, which are produced when conducting materials inside the planet's metallic hydrogen core spin. A plasma sheet is created on Jupiter's equatorial plane by the magnetic field of Jupiter trapping hydrogen ions from Jupiter's atmosphere and sulfur dioxide from Io's volcanic explosions. As a result of the interaction between the magnetosphere and solar winds, a hazardous bow shock radiation belt is formed which can harm spacecraft that get caught in it. Jupiter's moons are also shielded from solar winds by this enormous magnetosphere. On Earth, this is not a problem, but it might be a problem if we ever try to establish colonies on Jupiter's moons. Radio communications, for instance, will likely experience significant interruptions. It is highly unlikely that anything could ever live in Jupiter's atmosphere or surface due to the extremely hazardous conditions. The moons of the planet, though, might be a different matter. But if there is anything that our research into life on Earth has shown us, it is that life can exist in the most unexpected of settings. Due to the lack of solid surfaces, only floating organisms would likely be able to thrive on Jupiter if life exists there. Furthermore, due to the extraordinarily high atmospheric pressure levels, it's possible to find free-floating microorganisms, which are found exclusively at very high altitudes, above the cloud boundary. However, Jupiter's apparent lack of liquid water would be a challenge for any life that may exist there. However, on the moons of Jupiter, things might be different. Numerous moons orbit Jupiter. In actuality, according to the most recent count, there are 79, of which 26 are tentative. The largest four, known as the Galilean satellites, are named Ganymede, Europa, Io, and Callisto. The majority are quite small. Because scientist Galileo Galilei discovered these four moons in 1610, they are known as the Galilean satellites. Even while each of these moons is fascinating in and of itself, the four most well-known are always highlighted. The diameter of Ganymede, the biggest moon in the solar system, is 3,275 miles, 5,270 kilometers. Io is covered in sulfur and contains numerous active volcanoes. Currently, it is thought that beneath Callisto's highly cratered frozen rocky surface, there may be an ocean of liquid water. Europa has a fractured ice surface and might have an ocean of liquid water. The remaining moons are smaller, with most of them having erratic forms and diameters of six miles or less. It is believed that the majority of these tiny moons are asteroids that were engulfed by Jupiter's powerful gravity. The fourth largest moon of Jupiter, Europa, 
would be a desirable destination. Under Europa's frozen surface, there may be liquid water that might, in theory, support life. Europa expands and contracts as a result of the gravitational attraction of Jupiter and the other moons, which raises its temperature. There is a good chance that lakes and oceans will form on Europa as a result of this heat melting some of the icy crust beneath the surface. On Jupiter, though, researchers have found mysterious climate patterns that periodically recur in cycles lasting years and oddly mimic one another in each hemisphere. According to a new study, the peculiar discovery raises intriguing issues concerning the largest planet in our solar system as well as enormous gas giants that orbit other stars. Jupiter is one of the brightest celestial objects because of its enormous size, which is equivalent to 1,300 Earths. The captivating storms that swirl across Jupiter's upper layers of the sky have been revealed by telescopes over the past few centuries, and visiting spacecraft have proven the unfathomably intricate nature of Jupiter's atmosphere. Now, 40 years of infrared monitoring of Jupiter have revealed unexpected seasonal and non-seasonal periodicities, in addition to other associated puzzles, according to Glenn Orton, Michio Kaku, and other collaborators. The findings indicate that temperatures at a lower level, known as the troposphere, are strongly influenced by a higher layer of Jupiter's atmosphere, called the stratosphere. While this is going on, Jupiter has its own rings, albeit they are difficult to see without the correct equipment. It is thought that the material released by Jupiter's moons in response to meteorite collisions is what gave rise to the planet's rings. The materials didn't fall back to the original moons because of Jupiter's strong gravitational attraction. Instead, they drifted into Jupiter's orbit. Contrary to the more noticeable and long-lasting rings of other planets, such as Saturn, the rings of Jupiter gradually deteriorate over time, but replenish as a result of repeated impacts. Material from Adrastia and Metis makes up Jupiter's main ring. Other rings, like the Gossamer ring, are made of material from the moons of Thebe and Amalthea. A fresh look at Jupiter's atmosphere, rings, volcanic Io, and ice Europa is offered by new photographs taken by NASA's New Horizons probe on its way to Pluto. In the event that we find aliens on this planet, we shouldn't be very astonished. Or would that be absurd? Preposterous? These phrases are frequently used to describe things that people claim to be scientifically absurd. They say that because stars are so far apart, Aliens cannot travel to Earth in spacecraft. Since the brain does not send or receive messages, telepathy is not conceivable. Furthermore, because it is impossible to determine the precise location and momentum of every single atom in an object, teleportation would be an infringement of the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. But if you thoroughly consider these illustrations, you realize that they are merely impossibilities right now or in the near future. The fundamental question is, can they be accomplished with technologies that exist for hundreds of years, millennia, or even longer than our own? These so-called impossibilities might actually be highly challenging engineering puzzles. A better question would be, do these impossibilities break the known laws of physics? Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you're still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more mind-blowing videos about space.